Hey, welcome back to Bear Squid. On this channel, we simplify educational tech using the iPad. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use differentiated worksheets online with your distance learning program using Google Forms. So go ahead and open Google Forms on your Safari browser. I'm just going to type in Google Forms here. Okay, like always, as long as you're signed in, if you click on the first link, it will take you straight to forms. Okay, go to your account um, and then this should open up your forms. Now, I've already got one open up here. Uh, it's a new one. It's a Google Forms. It's, it's empty. There's nothing in it. Uh, and I've made one that I'm going to showcase. I can use it as a, as a template today. So how do we create a differentiated form? What do we do? What do we need for differentiation? Well, the first thing that you need, you need different sections. Okay. So we're going to create some differentiation using the sections. Uh, and then according to the students' responses, we're going to allow them to filter into different uh, core groups. Okay. So they can uh, go ahead and try similar or more advanced questions uh, according to your worksheet. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you that this section here, when you open up the form, first thing first, you have one section and one section only. What we're used to here is just used to adding questions to creating um, more responses from our students. Okay. So students can, we can create more questions here. Okay. But what we, we don't want to do that. I'm just going to delete these. What we want to do is we want to create more sections. Now, first thing uh, that we want to do here is we want to go to the settings and we want to create a quiz. Okay, we want to make sure that this is a quiz so students can get some feedback as well, instant feedback. Okay, uh, as they um, complete this quiz online. Uh, and so when they submit the quiz, they'll get some instant feedback. So go ahead and make this a quiz. Uh, and down here in the quiz options, we're going to say immediately give feedback after each submission. So as the students complete the form, they'll get some feedback. Feedback regarding what? Uh, this is what the feedback is. The feedback is the missed questions, the correct answers, and then the point values. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and save that. Before we save it, just go to general and collect student emails. Okay. You can also do response receipts so that um, you know that you're getting this uh, from your students and they know that it's been ticked off. Uh, also, you can do a limit to one response. For this demonstration purpose, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to go and preview this um, uh, form once it's complete so you can see it, okay? For all intents and purposes, when you're doing this uh, for your students, you probably want to limit to one response so you can see uh, what the students done as they completed this form, okay? Otherwise, they can go in and change it many times. Not that that's a bad thing, but uh, just so that you can track progress, uh, I would probably uh, select this to limit to one response, okay? So let's go ahead and save that. In terms of presentation, it says uh, a progress bar. I like this when we're doing quizzes. So you can go ahead and uh, do um, select a progress bar so the students can see what page they're on uh, and see a little bar with the, the progress on it as well. So that's really nice to, to do, yeah? And we're not going to shuffle the question order. I'll show you why in a bit, okay? Because we're going to select, um, we're going to put questions in different sections ourselves, okay? So we need to keep those sections organized. So let's go ahead and save this now. OK, and how do we create new sections? It's really easy. Instead of adding a question, what we're going to do is we're going to add sections. You can see on the top here, uh, the form is automatically generated a section for us. And this is to collect emails. So let's go ahead and add a new section. We just need to go down to here and it says add new section. So let's go ahead and add a section. In fact, I'm going to add multiple sections. OK, I'm going to add another section here. Go to section four, add another section, go to section um, five. Add another section. So I've got multiple sections here. So all in all, I've got one out of six. I've got six different sections to my form. Now, why am I going to do that? Well, I'll show you why, why I'm doing that. That's your section one. Now, what are we going to do in section two? Section two, give it a title first and foremost. So we'll say here part A or part one. OK, and then give a description to what this part is. And then we're going to add questions into part A. OK, I'm going to have maybe uh, three questions in part A. I hope you're following along so far. So part A, and, uh, and then I'm going to add my questions into part A. Now, let me go on to that template that I've created already just to show you what I've done. OK, let's go here. The title for this form is Evaluate Algebraic Expressions. That's what it's called. And um, here's my collect my email. Uh, in this particular one, I didn't do a name. I can go ahead and click on this section and go to add, and I can type in here name. OK, and I say required. That in section one now will ask the students when they or your participants to provide a name. Remember, the email is going to be by default. It's going to collect it anyway. OK, but my section two is called part A. 
And in part in the description that I have, uh, remember what this form is about, it's evaluating algebraic expressions, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, here's my question, okay? The description for this part is if k is equal to three, L is equal to 5 and M is equal to minus 2, find the value of, and then here's my actual question, 4K. Now, in order for the students to see the questions, I've repeated again that same instruction, and then I give the question here, 4K. So, here's the thing. These are my options. It's a multiple choice question. These are my options, okay? And option 1 is the correct answer. How do I do that? You just go to answer key, and you select whatever the right answer is. In this particular question, 12 was the right answer and you just click on done. Now, look, I'm not giving any point scores to this quiz. Why? Because students have a choice to um, do more questions on a particular part and a particular section, or they can advance to the next section to do more uh, challenging questions. So in order to do that, um, I've given each question a point score of zero so it doesn't affect their overall grade. Uh, because if they do decide to excel and go on advance to the next section, the questions that they've missed out on, they're not going to get the points for it. So to save yourself the trouble, uh, just set each question to zero. So in that way, they'll still get the feedback as to how they've performed per question, but they just won't have a point score, which is perfectly fine. I mean, that's not an issue here. So since my first um, answer here is um, the correct answer once i've pressed on done i'm going to go ahead and click on the three dots and i'm going to shuffle option order okay so i'm going to shuffle option order i'm going to select that so go down here and shuffle option order so that my first answer doesn't is not always the one that's going to show up as the correct answer now what i've done then is i've added a few questions so that's question one in part a okay and then if I go down, there's another question here. If k is equal to 3, in fact, the instruction is, is exactly the same, okay? Because in this part, each question is the same. Each instruction is the same. The question is slightly different. In question 2, if k is equal to 3, l is equal to 5, and m is equal to minus 2, find the value of, and then it says 9l. So here are the, are the selections. In fact, all of the instructions in part A are the same. The only difference is, is this expression is different. So it, uh, it demands a different solution. Okay, now once they've done these three questions, okay, in part A, which is my section two. So once they've done these three questions, they're prompted with this instruction, okay? It says, would you like to try similar questions or advance to the next section? Now this is, you know, self-submission. The students are gonna select whether they wanna try more questions or they wanna advance to the next section. It's entirely up to them, okay? So here it says, try similar questions or advance to the next section. So click on this question, click on the three dots and select, go to selection based on answer. So let me select that again, I'll show you. Go to selection based on answer. Now, if they wanna try similar questions, I've created um, another part, another section, which is part A, continued and I've got two more questions in part A. Now that follows exactly the same instruction but the um, expression here is just slightly different okay. Question five is exactly the same instruction again but with a different expression so there's trying similar style questions. Now that's for this response here try similar questions so we're going to advance to or we're going to continue to um, go to section three part A continued. So that goes to this part here. Very sensible to name your parts so that when you're selecting it from the drop down, you know exactly where you're advancing your students. The second option is advance to the next section. What is the next section? My next section is part B and part B has a different style of question. So I'm gonna say, if they wanna advance to the next section, they I need to direct them to go to part B, okay? So now they're going to part B. So let me walk you through this again. Section one, the title of the form, collect your email and your name, and then uh, we're going straight on to section two, which is part eight, which is where the quiz starts. I've got three questions here with the same instruction, same instruction, just a different expression here, which generates a different solution, okay? So here you've got question one, question two, and question three, and then we have this prompt, which says, would you like to try similar questions or advance to the next section? And this now, uh, means that we need to select this here. Go to selection based on answer. Okay, so if they want to try similar questions and we're going to promote them to continue uh, to part A continued, which provides two more questions. 
and if they feel as if that's too easy uh, they've had enough of that they can advance to the next section which is my part b okay so down here part b i have a different instruction now okay uh, and this is a bit more of an advanced question compared to part a so i've got two questions here in part b and then it goes on to uh, that prompt again. It says, would you like to try similar questions or advance on to the next section? So here it says, try similar questions. Now, if they want to try similar questions, I've actually continued part B. So you can see here in section five, part B is continued and they have two more questions in part B. Now, let's say they don't, they, they find these easy. Of course, at this point in time, they don't know whether they're right or wrong. They're just... Um, you know getting a feel of the quiz the feel of the test and saying you know what actually I find that a bit easy I want to advance to the next ones so when they select here advance to the next section I've actually gone to um, section six which is my part C okay so they can go here uh, and I'll promote them to part C which is again a new instruction and a new style of question uh, these are you can see that these expressions have indices okay these expressions had a division a quotient and these expressions were just where's it gone the first part part a were just linear expressions multiplication addition and stuff so that's how we're going to do this now um something to bear in mind okay in each part in each part each question i have gone here um to the actual question and i have not made it necessary for them to complete okay so they're not required none of the questions are required why because if they're going to advance on to a new section and they're not going to complete a few questions uh, and the question is required it doesn't allow the form to jump to uh, the next section okay so very careful there uh, but in a nutshell what i'm doing is i've created different sections okay of my quiz here the form um, and i'm basically uh, allowing the students to select whether they want to be promoted to a new section or they want to continue similar questions I think the best way that I can showcase this to you is if I preview this test So let's go here and let's give it a little preview So the participants will be prompted to enter the email address I'll just put my email address in here and then enter their name Okay, remember we've done that and you can see this lovely progress bar It says page one of six and gives you a little progress bar. I'm gonna click on next so this is uh, the first section, part A. So I can select any one of these, uh, whatever the answers are. Okay, uh, at, at this point, I'm saying to myself, you know what, that was a bit tricky. I don't know whether I've got these right. Uh, I'm not, you know, really confident with this section. I would like to try some more. You can see here at the bottom, it says, would you like to try similar questions or advance to the next section? I'm not really comfortable. I'm gonna try some similar questions and I'm gonna click on next. Now, you can see that it says part A continued is giving me a few more questions as was set up in the form. So here we go. Let's do a few more questions here. Okay, now I don't have a choice but to press on next and it's going to advance me to part B. So now I think I'm ready. It's advanced me to part B. I'm going to try some of these questions here. So I'm going to just answer these questions randomly. Okay, and then I'm going to say, hey, would you like, we've been prompted with this question, would you like to try similar questions or advance to the next section? Actually, you know, by now, I think I've got the hang of it. I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to advance to the next section. So I'm going to click on this, advance to the next section and press on next. You'll notice here, it's not part B continued. It goes straight to part C. So it skipped uh, a couple of questions and it's gone to, and it's advanced us to part C. So let's do uh, these questions here. Let's answer these questions here. And you can see the progress bar is at the end now. It says page six of six. Let's go ahead and submit this and we can go ahead and see the score straight away okay so there's no point score here because we tactfully didn't add any points because remember students who advance to the next sections are going to skip that those points so here we go students can see their feedback they can see the questions that they've done wrong and the right answer provided they can see the questions they've done right uh, uh, and um, get some look we did get one right thank god okay so question uh, on part b question one we got that right uh, that was our random choice anyway and we can see here that we we wanted to advance to the next section so we skipped out a part you can see these two questions now are, are marked incorrect or they're incomplete because we skipped that section okay and we can go ahead and we can see part c here see we uh, submitted it wrong here's my correct answer should have been one and the final one uh, 36 we should have uh, selected 64 
So I hope that helps. That's a really neat way of differentiating your worksheets online with your distance learning program. If you found that helpful, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, turn on notifications. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.